Hi, my name is Sean Thompson, and at Crypto, I'll be presenting the work Formalizing Delayed Adaptive Corruptions and the Security of Flooding Networks. This is joint work with Christian Matt and my supervisor, Jesper Bux Nielsen. I'd like to motivate this work using the example of Nakamoto style blockchains. This is a type of protocol where a group of parties, which you see on the right, participate in a lottery, which you see on the left, in order to be allowed to extend the current base chain with a new block. So in this case, where P1 wins, you might now like to disseminate this block to all other parties in the protocol. So the way this works is that P1 chooses a random neighborhood and then forwards the block only to this neighborhood. The neighbors will then again forward the block to their neighbors and so on and so forth until all parties have received the block. This works very well for a static adversary. However, as we are about to see, this doesn't work when we consider an adaptive adversary. Let's try to analyze this flooding procedure with an adaptive adversary. Here we have two options, either to consider non-atomic or atomic message sent. So if we first assume non-atomic message sent, then the adversary has the possibility at the moment P1 wins and tries to send out the block, then the adversary will learn that P1 is sending out the block and can now corrupt him. Furthermore, once he corrupts him, he can actually retract the message and thereby prevent the delivery of the block to all other honest parties. Therefore, this doesn't work. If we instead consider atomic message sent, then the adversary does not have the possibility to corrupt the sender of the block and thereby retract the block. However, what the adversary can do is to corrupt the neighborhood of the sender and, and thereby prevent the delivery of the message to the remaining parties in the protocol. So again, this doesn't work. Of course, what you can do is to send to all parties. Then the adversary cannot prevent the delivery, but this leaves us with quite a heavy workload for each individual party as they have to send to all other parties themselves. In this work, we consider a delta delayed adversary, where once the adversary decides to corrupt a party, it takes a certain time until the corruption actually becomes effective. So let us now try to analyze the flooding procedure against such a delayed adversary that is delayed for the time it takes to send plus the time it takes to resend the message. So as before, party one sends out the message to his neighborhood, but now of course the adversary can try to corrupt, but as the corruption doesn't become effective until the party, the neighborhood has already started to forward the message, then it's too late for the adversary once it actually once the corruption actually becomes effective and all parties will anyway learn the message. Our work has two main contributions. First, we provide a formal model for the semantics of delta delayed adversaries within UC. This is both useful for flooding, but also for protocols with long-lived committees. For example, Pass and Xi used an informal model that was similar to this 2017. Secondly, we provide two implementations of flooding networks within this model that is secure against an adaptive adversary delayed for the time it takes to send plus the time it takes to resend. The first implementation has a constant neighborhood with a logarithmic diameter, whereas the second implementation has a square root number of neighbors with a constant diameter. Thank you for your attention.